add-ons as a percentage of M&A deals has been increasing over time. And in our private equity practice at Strategex, we have noticed increased caution around platform investments. The prevalence and importance of add-ons is a trend that we don't see slowing down. And this has really highlighted the importance of having a strong add-on strategy. Uh, primarily using customer insights to one, uh, you know, develop a cohesive add-on strategy framework and two, identify potential targets. Because oftentimes, the thesis behind add-on acquisitions is to grow by expanding the products and capabilities of the platform. And after an add-on, platform companies will have a wider customer base and more organic growth opportunities through things like upselling, cross-selling. You know, but Anthony, one critical thing that I see often missing, though, is the fundamental question. Has the platform company even earned the right to grow? You know, in other words, is the core of the business secure? Yeah, this is often a huge oversight. And when I see this question being missed, it's usually an indicator of, bluntly, future failure. I mean, platform companies should not prioritize inorganic growth when they have not secured the core business, especially their most important customers. Because after all, customers are ultimately the source of all value that is created through M&A. And growing existing customer relationships will always be cheaper and easier than acquiring, onboarding, and retaining new customers in new markets. You know, that said, Anthony, uh, what are some primary characteristics that you look for and uh, look for to assess whether a company has earned the right to grow or not? Yeah, so beyond financials, we look to validate three fundamentals to really determine if, as you say, a company has earned the right to grow. First, we have to make sure we have a secure and loyal customer base. We like to see a best-in-class net promoter score. We like to see a majority of our customers say they're going to continue doing business with the company over the next few years. And the reason for this is because in our analysis, we consistently find that the top quartile of the customer base generates 90% plus of a, tar of, a, of a platform's revenue. So if we were to lose one of these key accounts, that would really hurt. So what we have to do is make sure that all focused is on key account retention. Second, we want to make sure we have a best in class customer experience. If the core product is broken, if the service model isn't working, why invest in adjacencies when there are things we can invest in today to just get better at what we've already invested in? And then third, we like to make sure that we have a majority, if not all of a customer's wallet share. Right Again, why distract our focus? Why invest in new things when we haven't even maximized the value of what we've already invested in? Got it. Yeah, these are great points. And to help contextualize these points, um, I have a couple of case studies from our work supporting our private equity clients and their platform companies and their search for add-ons. So let's take, take a look at these two platform companies in the software industry who are exploring add-on opportunities. So... First, we have company A, and from the very top, something is very, very noticeable. Uh, this MPS of negative 14. What does this tell us? <laughs> it tells us that the customer base is neither strongly secure nor loyal to the company. And this is even more evident when we compare this negative 14 NPS to the software industry benchmark of plus 36. Not only were customers strongly dissatisfied with the service that company A was providing them, but company A was also significantly underperforming its peers in its ability to bolster customer loyalty. And to your second point, Anthony, about customer experience, we also heard from key customers about some systemic and thematic issues in the customer experience. There were significant issues in technical support, reliability, uh, training resources, data management. You know, in other words, core functionalities of the software just weren't solid. In addition, many customers also told us that key features and most specifically integration capabilities were just straight up missing or broken within the core product. And this immediately gave me some concern about integrating even more capabilities to the platform through add-ons when the fundamentals of the platform just weren't as solid as we would like to see. Unsurprisingly, uh, most customers indicated to us that they expected to decrease feature spend and then they were evaluating some competitive alternatives and some other software solutions in the market. And in fact, 
we weren't even able to talk with many of these customers about new capabilities because so much of the conversations revolved around just venting about the software's failures. So clearly, company A had just not earned the right to grow yet. So our recommendation to the management team was to prioritize improving the core fundamentals of the software and the business before shifting their focus um, to um, shopping around for add-ons in the market. Because any add-on acquisition would have just created unnecessary complexity and possibly, and worse yet, even eroded any remaining goodwill within the existing customer base. Yeah, it's, it's more common than you think to find platforms that are in this kind of shape when they're looking for add-ons. The, the fundamentals just aren't there. Yep. But on the other end of the spectrum, we have company B, right? So this was a separate engagement, still a software platform. And from the onset, you can see a night and day difference in net promoter score. And, you know, net promoter score is not the end all be all, but it does tell us a lot. And one thing it tells us is that target uh, platform B's customer base was much more loyal, much more secure than target A, so we didn't have to worry as much about that short-term attrition that would have really hurt. Furthermore, we didn't find anything was systemically broken in the customer experience, right? I mean, yes, there were some things to work on, but the product was strong, the service model was there, any feedback customers had was suggestive more than corrective, right? So there really was a strong enthusiasm and loyalty toward company B. They had a majority of their wallet share in many instances, they were the only um, software solution that was being used for this particular application. So, you know, due to these numerous strengths, we had a very different recommendation for the management team of platform B. It was clear that they had earned the right to grow, we checked all the boxes, and in the process of checking those boxes, we also identified over two dozen specific add-on targets. And these targets were companies that customers were already working with, and in many cases, already integrating with the platform software. So we knew there was really strong strategic fit. And as a matter of fact, just a couple of weeks ago, management ended up closing on one of those add-on targets that we identified through this customer-driven process. Yeah. Um, thanks, Anthony. That's that really helpful. And, and I think what these two case studies illustrate is the importance of why when hunting for an add-on, especially in today's environment, it's not just about finding a good asset at a good price. You know, it, it's about making sure that we're taking a customer-centric approach to, one, really ensure that we have a strong foundation for expansion in the first place. And then number two, to identify add-on targets that fit with our current customer base and service offering. Well, thank you everybody for your time and please feel free to reach out to us with any questions.